This video was made possible by CuriosityStream. When you sign up at the link in the description, you'll also get access to Nebula, the streaming video platform that Real Life Lore is a part of. Back in 2013, the world was exposed to two near catastrophes. The Harlem Shake memes and a meteor that hit Russia. The meteor was a big 20 meter wide rock that weighed the same as the Eiffel Tower and it just so happened to blow up in the air above the Russian city of Chelyabinsk. Home to over 1 million people and most of whom had dash cams that caught some pretty awesome footage. The asteroid blew up with the force of roughly 26 Hiroshima scale atomic bombs, damaged over 7,000 buildings and sent roughly 1,500 people to seek medical attention for their injuries. It's believed that an asteroid of this size and power randomly hits the Earth somewhere about once every 60 or so years. And while they usually hit places where nobody lives, like the oceans, they inevitably will sometimes hit a city with over a million people, like this one did in Chelyabinsk. While that does sound kind of bad, Earth has been absolutely slammed by some much bigger rocks in the past. One of them was so bad that it nearly killed every single living thing on the planet, and like a weird sort of balance patch, it reduced the dinosaurs down to chickens, and it set up the world for mammals like us to take over. And now we are the ones who eat the chickens. This was the asteroid that hit the Earth roughly 66 million years ago, so long ago now that it's difficult to even find traces of its effects. So just for fun, what would happen if that same asteroid hit the Earth in the exact same location today? What would happen and would we all basically just die? For starters, the dino-killing asteroid was an absolute unit, believed to be somewhere between 11 and 15 kilometers wide. That is a lot bigger than Mount Everest, and it weighed a lot more, too. Imagine just for a moment Mount Everest flying directly at your city at 40,000 miles per hour. You know the damage it'll cause is gonna be pretty spectacular, and you also know that you're gonna die. But what you might not realize is just how absurd the damage and the overkill is actually going to be. As it's flying through the sky and burning up, the asteroid appears to you helplessly watching below as being brighter than the sun before it finally smashes into the ground and unleashes an amount of energy that's roughly equivalent to 100 trillion tons of TNT. That is over 1 billion times more powerful than the atomic bomb that was dropped on Hiroshima. If you were located anywhere near enough to see that fireball in the sky before it hit the ground, you would now be dead within just a matter of seconds. Any living thing located within a 1,000 kilometer radius of the impact area would be vaporized almost immediately within seconds. If the asteroid hit Manhattan, then everything stretching out to Halifax, Indianapolis, and Charleston would be instantly annihilated. And for a European perspective, if the asteroid hit the center of London, it would instantly annihilate every living thing inside of the UK, Ireland, France, Belgium, the Netherlands, Switzerland, Germany, and Denmark. Plants, trees, and grass would spontaneously burst into flames thousands of kilometers away from the crash site due to the absurd levels of heat. Wildfires would almost immediately rage across the entire continent of the impact site. At the epicenter of the impact itself, the asteroid would have punched a massive and deep hole into the surface of the planet, 150 kilometers wide and an unbelievable 20 kilometers deep. That hole would be bigger than the big island of Hawaii and deep enough to contain Mount Everest, with another Mount Everest stacked on top, and with three Burj Khalifas stacked on top of that. No bunker anywhere on Earth would be capable of protecting you from that kind of overkill. On the lower end of the guesstimations from scientists that I've read, the impact would have generated a 10.1 on the Richter scale, which is more powerful than every single earthquake that's taken place on the entire planet in the past 160 years. Roughly 8 minutes after the impact, the massive amount of vaporized rock would begin raining back down onto the planet in the form of hot ash and soot that would bury 
bury the surface and ignite even more wildfires. Roughly 45 minutes post-impact, a sudden roar of wind would blast through the region around the impact area at over 600 miles per hour, which would scatter debris around and absolutely flatten any structure or tree that was still standing. If the asteroid hit North America again like it did 66 million years ago, then the entire continent would basically be destroyed and on fire, and all within just the first day. The chain of events set into motion from the impact, however, would probably come close to wiping out life everywhere else too. The shockwave from the impact would most likely generate a civilization-ending tsunami at least 300 meters tall that would sweep across the land that was already burning, on fire, and choking on ash, and where there's probably a big hole in the ground. It's basically an apocalypse buffet at this point, but there's still a lot more left to be served up. The enormous amount of ash and ejecta pumped into the atmosphere from the crash would shroud the continent of impact in total darkness for some time, and plunge the entire world into a permanent haze that would resemble a twilight for around three years. Photosynthesis in plants and plankton across the world would be severely restricted, and most plants would likely die out over the course of those three years. Animals that rely on eating plants would then, in turn, die out. And animals that rely on eating those animals would ultimately, too, eventually die out. Just like what happened last time. A complete and total ecological collapse around the world would take place, and if it was just as bad as the last time around, it would mean that roughly 70% of all life on the planet would be eliminated. Acid rain would fall across the globe. The ocean's acidity levels would rapidly increase, but the big thing that most life would struggle with would be the unbelievable climate change. Because of all the ash and ejecta that was pumped into the atmosphere from the crash, the Earth would enter into a deep, years-long nuclear winter, where temperatures around the world would be freezing without any other seasons. Earth would enter into essentially a long Game of Thrones-style winter for years, but after that, the planet would flip and rapidly heat up in a surprise global warming event just waiting around the corner. Because of all the huge forest fires raging on a continent or even global scale, unbelievable amounts of gases would be pumped into the atmosphere. According to one estimation, as much as 10,000 billion tons of CO2, 100 billion tons of carbon monoxide, and 100 billion more tons of methane would be unleashed into the atmosphere as a result of the catastrophe. A double whammy of a several years long winter, followed by an extremely hot, years long summer, would probably prove to be too much for most life on the planet to endure and adapt to, just like it was last time. But if there's anything to learn from the last time, Time this happened, it's that Earth is much more resilient than we are. A disaster of this magnitude sounds like it would be the end of the world, but it really wouldn't be. It would be the end of our experience on the world, but it wouldn't be the end of the world itself. For that, it would have to take something a lot bigger and a lot scarier. Thankfully, a giant Earth-eating asteroid like this one hasn't been detected yet, so there's no real big reason to be scared. But one thing that definitely does scare me and keeps me up at night is the inherently unstable nature of every existing video platform that disincentivizes fun experimentation. I won't be surprised if this video ends up being demonetized here because I'm talking about something that could be considered a disaster. And that's why a bunch of creators, including myself, got together and founded Nebula. It's built by us to accomplish all of our hopes and dreams of an ideal video platform so that we can make the best stuff that we can in an ecosystem that actually supports us and enables us to talk about subjects that YouTube doesn't like. But the best part about Nebula is that you can get it essentially for free. Curiosity Stream and Nebula have partnered together so that when you sign up for Curiosity Stream subscription, you also get a Nebula subscription included at zero extra cost. That means means that you'll get Nebula, the platform built by creators themselves and home to all of our existing content ad-free, with plenty of exclusive original content like my own car show, Grand Test Auto, with an episode up there where I drive and review a Toyota Corolla among plenty of other cool cars, like a Lotus Evora and a Tesla Model S, and Curiosity Stream, the well-established platform home to thousands of professionally produced documentaries and non-fiction titles for just $20 a year 
here by signing up at curiositystream.com slash real life lore. This is the best way to support not only my channel, but dozens of other channels on YouTube, and you get to see some more awesome educational content and original shows that you won't get to see here because of the way that YouTube is. So go ahead and check it out now, and as always, thank you for watching.